What is up guys, welcome back to Titus Actual. Today I've put together a guide on the absolute best rune farms at every point in the game and the most common rune farming scams to avoid. Do us a favor and smash that like button if this video saves hours of your time. And if you're only subscribed on our main channel, I highly recommend subscribing here as this is where we post most of the videos like this. Alright, so diving right into the early game. You can do this with no weapon immediately. All you have to do is ride to the third church, take the teleporter over to Kaled, ride right past the dragon on the bridge, and grab the waypoint at Lens Rise. For the purists that don't want to do any sort of glitch, this is the best early game farm and it requires no weapons and no fighting. All you have to do is dodge a large sphere on your horse. I'll be covering an early game glitch farm later. So this farm should net you around 7,000 runes per minute, I farmed it for about 2 minutes and 17 seconds to make sure I had enough data to where if I had a good run or a bad run, it wouldn't skew the runes per minute. And in that time frame, I was able to gather 15,265 runes. In all of these tests, you'll notice that I make sure that the time accounts for the time that it takes me to use a gold pickle foul foot, and to make sure we're riding back to the grace instead of traveling there to lose that gold pickle foul foot. You'll also notice that while testing these rune farms, I was very careful to end the farm at a natural point where I would have started the farm. This further helps us make sure that our data is as unbiased as possible. I also wanted to do several runs of each farm, especially the faster farms that were only 10, 15, 30 seconds long, because I thought it was important to show the consistency of the run and how fast it can be completed consecutively. That way you're getting the most utilization out of your gold pickle foul foot as opposed to one slow farm that takes a long time to get back to and that causes you to lose that gold pickle foul foot by fast traveling in your map. Now if you're confused in terms of how I came to the runes per minute, there's a section at the end of the video in which I break down the math so that if you have another farm that may be better than something I have here, you can easily do the math and break it down and see for yourself if it actually is more efficient and therefore a better farm than what I have here. The problem with rune farm videos on Elden Ring is that they're typically bait and switch videos. There's a lot of scam videos out there that use the glitch farming methods where you jump off the map and swing your weapon, and they'll show you a big number of runes and say, oh, this is the best farm. But then they conveniently leave out that it takes a really long time to complete that whole entire circuit. And so if it takes five minutes to do it each time and you get 100,000 runes, yeah, it's a big number of runes, but you're only getting that every five minutes. So if you have 30 minutes to farm before hitting the gym, then you're only getting 600,000 runes in that 30 minute session. And there's probably much better ways to go about spending that time. Ways that could net you double, triple, or even quadruple the amount of runes that you had in that 30 minute window. This is why it's extremely important to always look at the efficiency of your rune farm to see how good of a rune farm it really is. And at the end of the day, the efficiency of the rune farm is as simple as looking at the runes you have and looking at the time it takes to get them. For the purpose of this guide, we're going to do it in runes per minute, but you could do runes per hour or however you want to break it down. The best mid-game rune farm in the game is still farming the bird in Mogwin's Palace. So whether you've finished Var's questline, or you've simply reached Consecrated Snowfield where you could take the portal to Mogwin's Palace, you should grab a bow and arrow and use it to make this bird fall off the ledge. In my testing, this farm provided an astounding 131,000 runes per minute. A lot of people complain about the consistency of the bird actually jumping off the ledge, so I showed a full minute and 11 seconds here of farming this bird to show you that you can consistently do this, and you can do it extremely quick. The secret here is to start going back to the site of grace as soon as you see the bird raise its wings. If it raises its wings, that means it's going to fall. So don't waste time sitting around staring at the bird to make sure it fell, just trust that it did, and if it didn't, you're better off running and resetting anyways, and not wasting time. Also, in terms of consistently making the bird fall, note where I'm shooting from, and then note that I move back just a little bit as the bird's approaching me. I found that moving away from the bird like that when it starts coming at me is a big factor in making sure that it jumps off the ledge. Another great part of this farm is the fact that your gold pickle foul foot utilization is very high. Since there's no fast traveling involved and you're just resting at the site of grace and repeating, you get to use your gold pickle foul foot for the duration every time that you use one. Another great part of this farm is because you're not actually killing the bird, it doesn't matter if you have a strong weapon. You don't need to level up your bow, all you need are arrows which are cheap and can be bought at a merchant. For when you get access to it, this is probably the most clutch farm in the game. Now the best farm in the game is still going to be in Mogwin's Palace at the exact same spot, but it's going to be using the Wave of Gold. Now since we don't get the Sacred Relic Sword until killing Radagon and Elden Beast, this is a late game rune farm. But there's no denying the efficiency of this farm. With almost 200,000 runes every minute, and that's me just farming very casually and not even being careful to try to make sure I hit everything, nothing else in the game really comes close. 
Sure, there's people out there that will bait you in and say, oh, there's a rune farm that will get you 300,000 runes. And you'll see the big number on their screen, 300,000, while their horse is falling through the ground. But it'll completely leave out how hard it is to complete that glitch, how inconsistent it is to complete that glitch, and the fact that even if somehow you were able to consistently do that glitch, it's 300,000 runes, but it takes five minutes to accomplish. And in that same five minutes, you could have made almost a million runes doing this or 650,000 runes doing the bird farm. So again, it's really important not to be tricked by the number of runes that you're getting while you're doing something, but the number of runes that you're getting every minute while doing it. And when accounting for all of that, this is still the best rune farm in the game. I think it has been since the very beginning. And this far into Elden Ring, after the one year anniversary and everything, I really don't see this being dethroned at any point. Though I still think that the bird farm is the best farm in the game, simply because you can't do this farm until you've killed the Elden Beast and it requires a leveled up sacred relic sword that you have to have the stats to use. I do the bird farm with an unleveled bow on a level 1 character all the time in my level 1 one shot challenge runs in order to farm runes to level up my weapons. And you just have access to that farm for so much of the game where you actually need runes. Now if you're not a purist and you're willing to do a glitch, the best early game rune farm is actually not farming the ball. You can come a couple steps south of that ball in Kaelid, and there's a giant sleeping dragon called Grail right outside of Fort Ferreth, and you can actually dupe this dragon. So you can get the runes for killing this dragon, which is 78,000 runes every single time, and if you're fast enough back to the Site of Grace, this dragon will respawn when you get to the Site of Grace. Now with the Golden Scarab and the Gold Pickle Foulfoot, you will get 28,000 runes per minute on this farm because the dragon will give you 78,000 runes every time it dies. Now this number is actually a little bit conservative because I farm this dragon with no points into stats, a very low level weapon, and no gear or talismans on aside from the Gold Pickle Foulfoot and the Golden Scarab Talisman. The Reduvia Dagger that I'm using, you can actually pick up in Limgrave right at the very beginning of the game. There's several choices in Limgrave for bleed weapons. There's even the Bloody Slash, Ash of War. You can pick that up in Limgrave as well on your way over here. And then you can make any weapon a bleed weapon. Because of the amount of life that this dragon has, you're going to want some form of bleed weapon. That's why you're seeing these big chunks of 13,000 damage. I call it a bleed proc, but it's actually referred to in Elden Ring as a hemorrhage. And what that means is the blood loss buildup on your weapon has caused enough blood loss buildup on the boss to reach their resistance for blood loss buildup, at which point they will take 10% of their overall maximum HP in damage, as well as an additional 100 damage. So for higher health bosses, and especially in early game, this is a huge DPS increase. And that's why you would want to use a bleed weapon on this boss, as this boss has a massive 87,000 health. So especially early game where your weapons aren't leveled and you're not doing that much damage, having blood loss buildup on your weapon will cut the time that it takes to do this farm down dramatically. Now again, depending on where you are in your early game playthrough, you could potentially kill this boss much faster than 2 minutes and 46 seconds. This is pretty much the slowest that you would be able to kill this boss if all you did was go and grab the Reduvia before coming here. And even at its worst, it's still 28,000 runes per minute, which is four times the other early game rune farm. But if you were, for example, following our early game OP in 10 minutes bleed guide, and therefore you had two bandits curve swords with bleed affinity at plus 12 to 15 already, you would absolutely cut the time down significantly on this farm, and you would see a much higher number in your runes per minute. Now, as you can see in the video, once you start to get this dragon anywhere near dead, it's very important that you mount your horse. If you happen to kill this dragon on accident by proccing a hemorrhage, or not paying attention and putting in the killing blow, you will not make it back to the site of grace in time and that dragon will be gone forever. But as you can see, if you're on your horse and you go straight back to the site of grace, when you stand back up, the dragon will be there to farm infinitely. Now I can't stress this enough, and no matter how many times I go over this, someone's gonna complain about it happening in the comment section. If this dragon's health is low and you are not on your horse when you strike that killing blow, you're probably not going to make it back in time and that dragon will be gone forever. If a dragon heart reward pops up, you messed up. Now before we cover the math and the rune farming items I recommend, 
I wanted to cover the current most popular scam in terms of rune farming. I've had several people send this to me, so I wanted to throw it into the testing to prove to you guys why this is a scam. So keep in mind that in order to do this, you have to be in the consecrated snowfield and therefore you have access to the bird farm. In order to pull off this rune farm glitch, all you need to do is run and jump off the back of this stairwell. And then apparently you spam the attack button. I'm not sure if this is necessary. I don't do it. But if done correctly, you keep falling and I guess you fall out of bounds and... I'm not sure if it despawns the zone and kills all the enemies there, but either way, you end up with 135,631 runes. If you're really efficient like I was here where the second you start seeing runes, you pull up your map and immediately fast travel back to the site of grace, then the run takes about 98 seconds, at which point you would just start the next run, which nets you 83,000 runes per minute, which is still much lower than if you were to go and farm the bird that you have access to in the same exact area that you are here. The portal for Mogwin's palace is literally a couple steps away from this side of grace. So it just makes zero sense to farm here when you could farm the bird at the exact same time and make significantly more runes. Another thing you need to consider is that if you're farming this, you lose your gold pickle foul foot when you fast travel back to the site of grace and you have to fast travel back because otherwise you keep falling. And since 90 seconds is only halfway through the duration of your gold pickle foul foot, you're essentially wasting gold pickle foul feed and using twice as many of them as you would if you were farming the bird, which also gives you a lot more runes per minute. In summary, don't fall for these scams. Now let's cover the math so you can break down your own rune farms. All you need to do is look at the amount of runes that you made while you were farming, and then look at the amount of time that you took to farm those runes and convert it into seconds. Then you just get runes per second by dividing your runes by that number of seconds. Once you have your runes per second, you can then easily convert the runes per second to runes per minute. Since there's 60 seconds in a minute, all you need to do is take those runes and multiply it by 60. At this point, you have your runes per minute and you can compare any farm that you found in the game to any other rune farm. And after doing that math, hopefully you can show up to the comment section and tell everybody here about an even better rune farm that wasn't covered. Now in terms of rune boosting items, there's only a couple of choices. Probably the most convenient because it doesn't require any farming or crafting is the gold scarab. This is a talisman and it's a reward for killing the dual clean rot knight bosses. And this is the boss fight at the end of the abandoned cave in Kaled. And this talisman will increase rune acquisition by 20%. Now the only other item that I would recommend if you're rune farming would be the gold pickle foul foot. You can find a couple of these around Limgrave. And then you can get a recipe to craft an unlimited number of them from patches in the Murkwater cave in Limgrave. And that's it guys. I hope you learned something. I hope this helped save you guys a bunch of time. And if it did, be sure to smash that like button. We'll see you guys in the next one. Stay dangerous.